here with 84 WHS, Dr. Eli Karam, marriage and family therapist in the studio with me, past president of the Kentucky Association for Marriage and Family Therapy. Good to see you, Eli. Good to see you, Terry. I guess you had a great holiday season. I haven't seen you in a long time. No, I've seen you on TV more recently than the radio. It's good to see you. Very nice. Uh, you t- you took the family uh, and you were with your in laws. That's right. For the holidays, and that's what we talked about, like back in December. That's it's right. It's now February, by the way. That's right. And people wish, you know, in, in December, the winter, they can tolerate it because you got fun things coming up. You have the holidays. You have presents. When we're sitting here, another snow day. Lots of people are suffering from these winter blues or. More for, formally, uh, seasonal affective disorder. It's got people down. Really, about 12 million Americans suffer from that. It really uh, causes a cramp in your individual functioning and your family and relational life. Does a day like today with more sunlight, does that help? I mean, I, I've, I've heard before that, that sunshine is part of this. Yeah, well, let's go over some of the, the symptoms and then the treatment. So it's it, it feels like literally uh, things that would used to bring you joy are no longer bringing you joy. You feel out of sorts, almost in slow motion. Uh, You see a spike in appetite, and believe it or not, many times uh, for high-carbohydrate food. So a day like the Super Bowl where you veg out, and uh, if you overdo it, a lot of people have remorse if they overdo it anyway. If you suffer from seasonal affective disorder, it's really going to hit you the next day. You'll also see your sleeping patterns completely thrown off as that people, uh, because their their circadian rhythms and their clocks can't sync up, so they're going to sleep more than they normally would. And some people, you know, some mornings I'll leave, it's dark out, I'll come home home it's dark out you don't see light and for a lot of people just not even on a nice day like this where you have snow the the idea of having light around them really affects everything tonin levels uh and for a lot of people their melatonin levels which is you know the natural chemical the body uses to kind of adjust to to sleep so yeah light therapy is a big big treatment for for people that are suffering from this you mean go see a therapist for this? Yeah, light therapy. Light therapy. They sell these light boxes. Uh, oh, I, I'm yeah. sorry. See, yeah. you confused me when you said light therapy. I thought you meant you were going to see a therapist, but only on a light basis. <laughs> you know, okay, I got gotcha. you. Illumination therapy. That's right. But uh, some people will you know, do psychotherapy. Or some people will uh, go and get an antidepressant just seasonally this type of year from like the end of October through March. But light therapy, they sell these light boxes, and they recommend you sit in front of them for about – 45 minutes a day and for some people they swear by them Uh, i don't have one personally also people will go to a tanning salon people that aren't even really into that just to have this full body warmth and and feel during this time of year i'm not being i'm not joking about this but but what about like taking in summer movies like if you have uh old old movies or something just to take you into a different time of year or time frame or how about watching something that takes you to a better time in your life when you we're feeling happier. No, you, I mean, you're joking about it, but that is exactly what people would do. Uh, and, and a lot of behavioral therapists or, or marriage and family therapists, too, will work with you to visualize not only a happier, sunnier time in your life, but also plan ahead. A lot of people get stuck in any kind of depressive state because they're just in Groundhog Day, like your opening clip was. Every day is the same. They have nothing to look forward to. So a uh, marriage and family therapist uh, can help you kind of tap into kind of some relational goals uh, and looking forward. So maybe you're not going anywhere now. Maybe you have a spring break trip coming up or something you're going to do in June or July. Exactly. Yeah. We are talking about a July trip in our family or late June trip now. And uh, it's with several different families, you know, members all right. coming together. And uh, we're going to we're going to we're planning something now. But I think I like the the idea of everybody throwing around ideas and thinking about what it does put you. It lets you project a little bit about how this will be fun. In fact, the guy I brought up today earlier today said you got to go to a dude ranch. Right. Because we're going to be in an area where, and I, I see that thought hadn't crossed my mind, but kids would love that. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up the whole family component because it's just not adults that feel this. I mean, uh, especially uh, late adolescents, teens are going to feel this as well, and they're kind of stuck. They get a, a reprieve from a day like uh, school like this, but, you know, it the idea of kind of feeling stuck and not having something to look forward to. So many people also are are kind of... Now, here we are the first couple of days of February. They're saying, oh, these goals I set, these New Year's resolutions I set a month ago, I've already, I've already shot them down the drain. So uh, lots of people are re-envisioning those goals, kind of building in 
what maybe it seems an insurmountable goal to breaking it down into something more manageable. So what we also do for people that are stuck with seasonal affective symptoms is we try to create balance in their life. And balance, I mean by this, Terry, these things you're doing anyway, but some people get out of balance. Balance, you need physical outlets. Exercise mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. huge. Some people that are outdoor exercisers really get oppressed by this weather. And when they think they have six to eight more weeks of this weather coming up, it really gets them negative. So uh, some way to get exercise, physical outlets, uh, uh, intellectual outlets, some type of project or something to kind of sink your teeth into. That's what I yeah. thought, too. If you could engage yourself in something new, just step out of the box, try something different. That's right. You have to have something. Uh, if you're just clocking in and clocking out and there's nothing that you're kind of passionate about, uh, either at work or outside of work, you're not going to do well. And also interpersonal outlets, good friends. Family, yeah, reconnect. reconnect. Exactly. All right, 30 seconds left on this segment here. If something did come up over the holidays with someone in the family, is it have we waited long enough now to try to reconnect with someone and say, you know what, I'm yeah. um, sorry that that didn't go as well as we thought on Christmas Day. Right. If there was a tear, you've had a month now to process it. You want to start the repair. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I like that. Eli Karam, his website is elikaram.com. His last name is spelled K-A-R-A-M. Marriage and Family Therapist associated with U of L Kent School of Social Work. We're going to talk more about that. Uh, the one's a sleeper, and the other one wakes up when they hear a cricket two miles away. That's coming up in about ten minutes. What? Ma-